Due to FDA regulations, the check and inject kits made by Curaplex will now have a new, updated, retractable safety syringe. This is a training video from Marin County's new check and inject program, where we're going to be administering epinephrine intramuscularly with a syringe and a needle instead of the auto injector. What is anaphylaxis? I want to review the basic principles of allergic reaction and anaphylaxis. A mild allergic reaction is a runny nose, mild hives, mild nausea. But a severe allergic reaction is called anaphylaxis. This is a life-threatening reaction to an allergen and must be treated. So let's review all the body systems that can be affected in anaphylaxis. The lungs. The patient can experience shortness of breath, wheezing, repetitive cough. The heart. The patient can have bad skin side, pale, mottled, clammy, dizzy, low blood pressure. The throat. Tightness, hoarseness, stridor, trouble swallowing or breathing. The mouth can have significant swelling of the tongue or the lips, and the skin can have hives or widespread redness. And finally, the gut, repetitive vomiting and diarrhea. When two or more of these body systems are affected, we need to strongly consider administering IM epinephrine. It will keep your patient's airway open and maintain their blood pressure. The number one reason patients die of anaphylaxis is not getting epinephrine in a timely manner. I just want to mention that often healthcare providers are nervous about administering epinephrine to elderly patients because of their history of high blood pressure or heart disease. I want to reiterate, it is very important to give this medication if they are in anaphylaxis, but if you are worried, consider a physician consult. Another indication for giving epinephrine is a patient experiencing severe asthma, which could be wheezing, repetitive coughing, shortness of breath. If you are treating a patient with severe asthma, it is mandatory that you do a physician consult before administering epinephrine. Step one, BLS routine medical care. Assess and treat your patient's ABCs. You're gonna to need to get vital signs, chief complaint, history, medications, and allergies. You may need to put your patient on oxygen or lay them down flat. Step two, removing the allergen. We may not know what's causing the allergic reaction, but if you do, take it away from the patient. Step three, gathering your equipment. All right, so this is what the kit looks like now. Um, it's made by Curaplex. Um, once you open it up, um, there's going to be a new updated syringe, and we'll talk about that in a second, and then the epinephrine, and then alcohol and Band-Aid. The syringe is the biggest change that I wanna review with you today, and it's a generic one mil syringe, but it has some cool safety features and the FDA has regulated that we can no longer have the letters A for adult and P for pediatric on here. It's now a generic one mil syringe with, um, it's um, measured in tenths now. So as far as your policy, pediatrics or children require 0.15 mLs and adults require 0.3. And so once you draw up your medication, you're gonna notice that the needle is already attached. Step four, cleanse and prep. Using appropriate BSI, now it is time to expose our site for injection. Marin County Protocol uses the interior mid thigh. Once you have cleaned the site with an alcohol prep pad, you are ready to withdraw the medication. Make sure the vial is clean and clear of any bacteria. I can do that either by popping off the top of the sterile cap, or cleaning the top of the vial with an alcohol prep pad. Step five, insertion and withdraw. Next, I want to flip my epinephrine vial upside down so that all the medication falls to the bottom. Then I wanna insert the needle into the rubber stopper, pull back the plunger, and fill my syringe with medication. Remove the vial, you may have air bubbles, that's okay. You're gonna flick it to remove the air bubbles. Then you're going to push out the medication to the desired dose. We wanna emphasize the importance of triple checking your medication. Is it the right medication? Is it needed? Is it the correct dose, site? Is it expired? Even have your partner double check. Step six, injection. When I give an IM injection, I like to pinch the skin together to make it less painful. I dart the needle in at 90 degrees, 
push the plunger to administer the medication and remove the needle. And once you administer the medication, there's a new safety device on here. So once you push the plunger to give the medication, when you're done giving the medication, you're gonna put a little more pressure at the end and the needle retracts back up into the syringe and put in the sharps container. Massage the area for 15 seconds with an alcohol prep pad. Place the Band-Aid and we are all set. Step seven, reassess and report off. Did the medication work? Are there any side effects? Check your patient's vital signs every five minutes after administering the medication. It is rare that you would have to initiate a repeat dose for anaphylaxis. If you feel like your patient is not improving, you need to initiate a physician consult. Once ALS has arrived, you need to report your findings and your treatment to the crew. All patients should be transported to the hospital. The paramedics and the ER can give additional medications to prevent reoccurrence. Step eight, documentation. All patients treated on the check and inject program have to have a PCR completed. Remember, 100% of the check and inject calls will be reviewed by your CQI coordinator. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to contact our training team. We are here to help you. This is an exciting new change for Marin County. Now you get to practice your skills with your EMT instructor. Thank you for the hard work you do and be safe out there.